This week on Full Circle Florida, your voice, your choice, your vote, and what matters to you. What issues matter to you right now? Right now, uh, I would say the economy. The economy, inflation, immigration, women's rights. Which one is pushing you to the polls? What you told me this week. The final sprint to election day. Harris, Trump, the battle map getting wider as the race gets closer. Who has the momentum? How influential will next week's debate really be? We discuss you debate. And the surest sign of fall, the new NFL season kicking off. Pat and Aaron join me at the round table for an honest inventory of all the Florida teams. Who's got the best shot to make a run at the Super Bowl this year? Welcome everyone here to Full Circle Florida. The ballot is stronger than the bullet. Abraham Lincoln said that. We don't have the government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. Thomas Jefferson, a man without a vote is a man without protection. Lyndon Johnson and our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. Martin Luther King Jr. The wisest leaders that this country ever had always knew the power of your vote. But what is driving you to make the choice this November? Your vote, your voice, and what you shared with me this week. This election is starting to heat up like the September sun in Florida. So we don't want to know who people are voting for here. We want to know why they're voting. We want to know what they're voting for. Take the left and the right out of it. What is driving people to the polls? What are the issues they care about the most? It's your voice, let's go. Can we talk? No, we can't, bye-bye, see you later. I would say a strong leader, a powerful leader, somebody that could represent us in the right way and somebody that could lead us to a better country overall. I would say women's rights in sports um, and making sure that there's a certain like biological boundary and um, level set there so it's e equal and even for everyone. What issues matter to you right now? Right now, uh, I would say the economy. It's on the inflation front, how are you guys feeling that on a, on a day to day? I, I presume, are you guys students? Yes. How are you feeling that uh, as you're trying to uh, attain your education and, and you know, get on with uh, your profession? Um, it's hard to save money and then spend it at the same time for necessities because everything is so much more expensive. Um, and my parents are divorced too, so uh, single incomes, it's really affected us as well because the price of everything is increasing. We got two customers coming our way. Do I go right? Do I go left? <laughs> No pun intended. This is where I feel strongly. I, I'm an American. I was in the United States Coast Guard. I fought for our country. How come we give billions of dollars to other countries to help them, but we're not taking care of ourselves? The economy, although I'm in the middle of a meeting, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Speaking I, of, I, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you do your job, sir. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. <laughs> Of course it's the economy. He's work. I'm working here. What are you doing? State of democracy. I think there's a lot more at stake than just politics in this. Is that Baker Mayfield? I mean, obviously supporting women's rights is a big thing. Florida's not doing a great job of that right now. Uh, our governor is weak and uh, I don't know. I just think it's Kamala's year and it's gonna be, be good for normal people. Can we talk to you real quick? Can we, we're just asking, what are the- yeah, I gotta go, sorry, I got work. What are the issues that matter to you in this election cycle? I gotta go to work, man. You gotta go to work, all right. <laughs> Has anyone told you you look like Baker Mayfield? <laughs> Is this uh, the first or second election that you vote? I mean, how many times have you been able to, to do this? Um, this is gonna be my first election. First election? Yeah, this is also gonna be my first election. And, and how does that feel? Um, it feels good, it's a little scary, but I'm excited. What do you care about? Um, honestly, just the ability to coexist. Truthfully, honestly, just everybody kind of mind their business, but respectfully, you know, some things do require concern from external forces, but at the same time, just be it, you know, be happy, mind your business, enjoy your life, don't let other people, you know, intrude on your own personal joy. So, why is it scary? Is it because you feel like the stakes are high? What, why does that, yes. what's the feeling behind that? Um, the stakes are definitely high, and I feel like. It's just like important to vote and for what I want, it's just scary because I don't know if we'll get that. 
and my voice is very important and so is everybody else's. Your voice is important and thank you for sharing your voice with us. I appreciate it so much. Take care guys. Thank you. Okay, let's welcome in our own voice of reason here. As always, Dr. Susan McManus joining me again. You know, you've analyzed a lot of elections and the sentiments and the motivations leading up to these decisions that we all face. We heard from a wide spectrum of voters there, but there was one common theme for most, the economy, inflation, and specifically the price of food that they're confronted with. That's something that they're gonna be motivated to vote on come November. Not surprising at all. Yeah. When you have everybody having to eat and f have food to survive, and when people go to the grocery store or fast food or whatever else, what they're going to easily not notice, and it happens every time they, you know, two or three or four times a week, they notice, wow, it costs a lot more than it used to. And then they think about, you know, but it's eating a larger share of what money I'm making where I'm working. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that uh, issue that is an everyday issue that every person can see the before and after, it's no surprise whatsoever. Yeah, cereal's now at least $10 a box. And I don't want to minimize the other issues because it did come up, abortion came up, um, women's rights in sports came up, immigration came up, but the one thing that came up common uh, really among everyone was how they're feeling inflation on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Meanwhile, Harris and Trump, they're making a lot of promises as we enter this final 60-day sprint about what they plan to do if they're elected. And I just want to know, how do the voters know who to trust? Because they are saying a lot of things. It's kind of like when you go to the car dealership and they're like just throwing a lot of things at you. You're trying to make sense of it. And this is the first election where you basically have two people that are running against each other that have a proven record. Trump was in office and Kamala has been in office so people can look at the record, see whether they say what they did, what they said they were going to do or, or so forth. But right now we're into a flip flop game. Each of them is changing their right. positions because cha things change. The bottom line, when asked who they trust most to get their news about politics, number one is family and friends. Hmm. At the very end are the candidates, the parties and the media. Well, it's interesting. You say the flip-flop thing, and yeah, you talk about the voters not knowing who to pick and how to make up their mind. The candidates seem to not know how to make up their mind. Stay with us. we got more to talk about next on Full Circle Florida. Rick Klein joins me with an update on what also hangs in the balance, the control of Congress, and which way it's bending may determine the power and the effectiveness of the next president.